Hello and welcome to this week's Biz Smart Lunch and Learn webinar. Our weekly webinars are aimed to provide advice and share knowledge amongst business owners. If you would like to keep up to date on our latest webinars, then please make sure you follow us on SlideShare or subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also access all our resources for business owners by just leaving us a comment. Our host joining me today is BizSmart founder, Kevin Brent. But before we start our webinar, can I ask you all to post any questions that you may have for Kevin and he'll do his best to answer them all at the end of the session. Thank you very much, Kevin, over to you. Thank you very much, Caroline. Good stuff. Right, so this webinar follows on from the one uh, that did previously on core values and together the core values and the and the core purpose make up what Jim Collins calls the core ideology. And together with our Vision Future, as you can see on the slide here, that, that I'll come on to in another webinar, they make up our vision, which is a fundamental starting point for a robust business strategy. So, by now, we should have worked on our core values a little bit, and we should have started to get some buy-in from our team, because ideally we would have done that as a, as a team exercise. So what, what do we mean by core purpose? Well, fundamentally, it's about understanding why you do what you do, not just, not just the what you do. And Simon Sinek also refers to this as, as the start with why, and you can find a TED talk that he's done, find that online just by searching, typing in his name. And, and he will talk through, he talks through the fundamental importance of getting to know your why. And a strong core ideology is absolutely fundamental to long-term success. You need to have identified and be able to articulate why you do what you do. And not just you, but your whole organization, your whole team needs to be able to articulate why you do what you do, your core purpose. Okay, so let's, let's talk a little bit more about a good core purpose. So a good, a good core purpose will, and, and why you need to have a, have a core purpose. So if you do it well and you get a good, sort out your good core, a good core purpose, it will help you to, amongst other things, to rekindle perhaps the passion in, that you have in what you do. You know, perhaps when you started you had great passion, great reason as to why you were doing something, and maybe that's got lost a little bit along the line. Uh, often that is the case. So a good core purpose should be something that you are really passionate about. And, you know, the reason you get out of bed every morning, the reason you do what you do. But it will also do a couple of other things. Because a good core purpose will help you to think outside the box and to identify other things that you potentially could do in the future that would support your core purpose. So it will help you to think expansively about things that you can do. But on the flip side, it will also help you to focus and it will help you to reject ideas that don't fit in with that core purpose. So let me let me give you an example of what I mean by thinking outside of the box. So a number of years ago, I was a, I was a director in a, in a medium sized business, about a 35 million pound turnover that provided home care delivery services to chronically ill people that were under hospital care but living at home. So fundamentally, we were a logistics company delivering high value and critical medicines to patients at home. But basically, we were moving boxes, I suppose. And our revenues were based on contracts with hospital trusts and the margins were under increasing pressure, as you can imagine. And in the early years, we were able to charge a percentage of the value of the medications that we delivered, which was very nice, thank you very much. But that model was changing much more to a fixed fee per delivery, as you can probably imagine, any of you that are in a, a remotely connected with delivering products. So we took time out and we had to carve out a reasonable amount of time um, from, from data activities with senior management team to, um, to work on, on strategy. But we took time out specifically as well to do the exercise on core values that we went through last time and on and on our core purpose. And we looked at, yes, we looked at what we did, but we asked ourselves why? And we came to the conclusion that what we were passionate about, the reason that we were in business as a, as a company, was to help avoid 
unplanned or unnecessary admissions into hospital from the patients that, that we deliver medications to. That's fundamental what we're about because after all, these patients had serious long-term conditions and if they weren't managed well, then that could mean that they would end up back in hospital. Something obviously that the patient and the families didn't want, but also something that the hospitals were keen to avoid because last minute unplanned admissions are extremely expensive. So once we started thinking about things in this way, that led us down the path of asking, what are the reasons for these unplanned admissions? You know, why, why do they happen and what could we do to avoid them? And whilst many of the reasons, so to many of the reasons, in fact, came down to take, not taking the medications correctly, which part of that, yes, was if the meds were delivered on time, of course, you know, that, that's certainly part of it. But also it can be down to forgetting, you know, some of these patients simply would just forget to take them. They might not really fully understand how they need to take them and, and the importance of taking them at the, at the right time. And the number of other things that, that might come into play. So what we did was we looked at developing then a, a, a range of reminder and what we called adherence or compliance programs to help patients and the carers to make sure that the medications were correctly administered at the recommended time and frequency. Now, of course, part of that, we need to consider the commercial model. Is there somebody that would pay for that? And as it turned out, both the hospitals and the pharmaceutical companies, the drug manufacturers themselves, were keen to support these kind of services because it's in everybody's interest. Not only is it in the patient's interest, but it saves the hospital money. And also from the pharmaceutical company point of view, it means that the medications, if they're used correctly, will have the best results, which is what they need at the end of the day um, to for them to actually get funding and things for their, for their drugs. So... We expanded our range of services to higher margin services where the margins weren't constantly being squeezed as they were in the simple delivery model. And that all started simply from saying, why do we do what we do? So if you, if you do this exercise properly and give it the thought that it deserves, you, you may well have some light bulb moments. That may be, that may be what happens. But even if you don't have absolute fundamental light bulb moments, it will give your team, both the team now and any future people that you're going to employ, a real sense of purpose in what they do rather than just turning up and working their hours. And when things get tough and we come up against obstacles in our path, which happens at times for all of us, then it helps us to provide a motivation to find a way around because we know what it is that we're doing, why we're doing what we're doing. And therefore the question becomes, how do we get around this obstacle? Not, oh, well, let's turn around and go back the other way. So let me give you, let me give you an example. We did this exercise specifically for a telephone call binding service, and it took a little while to get to it. But fundamentally, it was very simple at the end of the day because their core purpose, we worked out, was making the right first impression for their customers. Very simple, but actually when you think about it, very powerful because everything they do is about that, the way they answer the phones, but that means that they can develop processes and procedures within the business to make sure that that is what they do and that's the result that they have. And they can also measure it if they want to. They can include something on those lines in their staff evaluations. And they can also, and they did, build it into their recruitment process by holding the first interview over the phone and deciding very quickly if the candidate was able to make the right first impression. Because clearly, if they can't make the right first impression on, on a phone call, they're not going to be much good in making the right first impression for, for potential clients. So there was no point then in inviting them in for a longer interview and then rejecting them in that interview. You can, you can find a nice way to bring that short telephone interview to a close. Now, what it also did though, was it, it helped them to think about areas that they may not want to pursue. So you know, one of the things that potentially they could do is branch out into all sorts of admin services and, and, and all sorts of other things they could do. But again, what it enabled them to do was to think about whether it really fitted with their core purpose what they were really great about, what, what they were passionate about, why they did what they did, and they can then reject other things. So, 
to begin, how do, how do we actually discover our core purpose? How do we get to finding a really good core purpose? And what what makes it? How do we know we've got a good core purpose when we when we get it? So, very simple in principle, just try the five whys exercise. Start with what you do. So, fine. We answer the phones for our customers or, or whatever it is that you do within your business. Start with start with that. And then ask yourself, why is that important? Write the answer on a, do this on a flip chart or um, a whiteboard or something where you know you, you can see it. Ideally, as I say, do it with your do it with your team. If you haven't got a team, do it with somebody that you would count as a trusted individual, as we talked about before, that you would rate their ideas. So you can bounce it. It works much better if you can bounce ideas off somebody else rather than trying to do it in isolation on your own. So simply keep asking yourself why up to five times typically, each time brainstorming and recording your answer. And, and if, you, if you do it five times, I'd be amazed if you haven't got to something really quite fundamental by the end of that and got to the, got to the root of it. Review all of those different answers with, with your team. Look for the answer that resonates the most, generates some, some passion and that people can get behind. And, and that should be really getting to the heart of your core purpose. You might want to fiddle around with a few words and things like that. But this is not really a wordsmithing exercise. It's not so important that you get every single letter and every single word right. It's trying to capture the fundamental reason, core purpose, why you do what you do. So basically the goal is to keep asking why till you get to the true essence of your, of your core purpose. As I say, we find it helpful to have those flip chart, do it on flip charts, and if you've done the flip chart, if you sorry, if you've done the exercise on core values beforehand, it's actually really useful to have those up on the wall as well, so that you've got those to um, just just to see, and you've got them in mind, and you can use them as part of the thinking that you're going through. And it is important to think long term with your core purpose, because what you're trying to do is to find something that is going to be true pretty much Forever. So don't limit it to a particular technology or something. Um, you know, core purpose needs to be reasonably expansive that you could imagine having in place um, pretty much for as long, well, basically for as long as you imagine running the business, which you know, hopefully in some cases is, um, is certainly your lifetime, perhaps maybe even longer than that. Okay, so that's the, that's the exercise, and I've given you a couple of examples. Perhaps a couple more examples from businesses that you may well know, because this is something that it, it, it's one of those things that has come from the big corporate world, but applies really, really well to small and medium sized businesses. You know, it's something that we can all do. It's not something that costs a lot of money to do. But but as I say, it's something that big business have done. So 3M, typically you may you may know of 3M. Um, from a, from I mean, they, they used to make tapes and make all sorts of things, but including and post-it notes, things like a whole range of whole range of things, so tapes, paints, post-it notes, whole sorts of stuff. Not necessarily limited to one particular particular technology, but the core purpose that they came up with right at the beginning of when they started was about solving unsolved problems innovatively. So that statement completely sums up what they're about. So you wouldn't expect them to come up with a slightly better fridge than somebody else has done because that isn't there isn't really an unsolved problem particularly in the in the, in the fridges or or well, i guess there is that new type of fridge actually the completely new way of working so that might well have been but actually typically you wouldn't expect them to come up with a slightly improved version of something they look for where there is a problem that is unsolved and that then that can be solved with an innovative solution. And they build that in throughout their organization and they actually have time where certain levels of the teams are given time each week to work on coming up with unsolved problems and, and new ideas. And then if one of those comes through, there's a special process, special team that they have where they can access potential funding to develop that idea further they want. So they've built it fundamentally into the way that they do business. Other companies that you may well have heard of Sony, for example, their core purpose is to experience the sheer joy of advancing and applying technology for the benefit of the public. So again, you can see how that worked potentially for, for Sony. Um, 
So number number of different number of different type of companies. We're trying to think who else we might. Nike. You, we probably all know of, of Nike. So theirs is a little bit more direct. So it's to experience the emotion of competition, winning and crushing competitors. So there's an interesting point within within here is that core purpose is not necessarily something you're going to put on your website for public consumption. That uh, and that may well be the difference between that and a mission statement actually in that um, mission statements typically something that, that is there visible for everybody the, the, the public uh, a core purpose is more internal it might well be that parts of it become much more public but it's it's to galvanize your internal team uh, more than it is necessarily to act as a, as a marketing campaign okay so we've looked at some ideas of um, of what makes core purpose or you know, what core purposes are different organizations and we've talked about how we might go around trying to get one now what we want to do then is once we've actually got this core purpose or what we think is a good core purpose how do we test it to know that it, it is a really good purpose and and there's a number of key questions that you can ask that will help with this and and they come you know I am referring back to Jim Collins's work from his book good, good to great in that um, and he's got some great questions so and if you can tick yes to all of these questions then you've got a fundamentally strong core purpose the first one is do you find it personally inspiring is it something that makes you want to get out of bed for if it's if it's boring and mundane then it's not really going to be the kind of core purpose that can galvanize your your team secondly can you see this core purpose can you envision this purpose being valid or as valid a hundred years from now as it is today. So that's where that long-term thing comes comes in. If you if you see it's really only just you know with this current technology for the next couple of years, then that isn't really your core purpose. Thirdly, does this core purpose help you to think expansively about long-term possibilities, the range of activities that your organisation can do? So um, beyond the, perhaps the current products and services, but. You know, for for example, Disney's Disney's core purpose is a really simple core purpose is to make make people happy, and they had that as I say right right from the beginning. It's not something they thought about afterwards, but that helped them to go from the initial strategy of cartoons into full length feature animation, all sorts of stuff, the Epcot Center, everything, because their that their core purpose is around that. So that's a very wide encompassing core purpose, but it still allows them to think about things that they would not pursue so fourthly does the does the core purpose help you decide activities what activities not to pursue and say so first the one before that was expensive about long term but does it actually help you to think about things that you might not do so HP for example would not pursue markets where there's no opportunities for a technical contribution because their core purpose is all about the business side of things and about making a technical contribution is this core purpose authentic is another question. Is it something that is not just nice words on a bit of paper, but something that actually really does mean something? Because there's no point in doing this if it just becomes a wordsmithing exercise. It's got to be something that is authentic. So part of that is, would a broad range of people within your organization greet it with enthusiasm and actually think, yeah, you know what, that, is, that, that, that really is, rather than, rather than cynicism. And you know, you could take that a bit further and say, well, if I if I were to say that to my children or to my partner at home, uh, what what we do for a living, or if you said it to somebody in a, in, in a pub, would you feel proud in dis in describing your work in terms of this core purpose? So there's a number of questions that will help you to work out whether or not you've got a good core purpose. And I would say, if you've managed to tick yes to all of those, then you've got a pretty strong core purpose. If you've got any doubts about some of those questions, then you might want to go back and think again a little bit. So that really wraps up this webinar on core purpose. And we've now defined our core ideology. So we've done the core values and the core purpose and the core ideology, and we're well on the way to establishing the foundations from which we can build a really strong strategy moving forward. So the next time around, I'll look a little bit more at what Jim Collins calls the envisioned future, which is looking a little bit ahead, but to a time frame that is not quite as far as the core ideology, because the core ideology is that forever stuff, but the envisioned future is then looking at a time frame which is a reasonable distance away, but something that we can actually tangibly get a, get a view on. So we're going to look at 
and the vision future typically a description of something like 10 to 15 years time so that would be the next the subject of the next webinar thank you very much fabulous thank you very much kevin um you've got a couple of questions waiting for you already uh, the first one is from Duncan, and he asks, and he says, my core purpose works for us now with four employees, but we want to grow our business. How do I make it work for me when I employ over 30 staff? Fantastic question, Duncan. And really, really important to get that core purpose now and get it fundamentally ingrained in your organisation. One, of the, one of the big things that we all struggle with as entrepreneurs trying to build our business is once we get beyond a few people is actually having people that have the same passion about doing the business as we do uh, and having good set good core purpose and a good set of core values is one of the ways it's not the only way but is one of the ways that you can really galvanize that team so so what you want to be trying to do not only is have people involved in creating that core purpose so that it's right but try and really then think about what does this core purpose mean to each role and when you're recruiting people think about how you can ask questions in the recruitment process that mean that they that you can understand whether or not they are a fit from your core values and your core purpose point of view so build it right in in your recruitment build it into your evaluation process when you're when you're reviewing employees think about it there but think about it in every single role if you're writing job descriptions or we use something called a job scorecard which is subject to another another webinar but if you're if you're, if you're doing that job description or job scorecard think about how the core values come into that right at right at the beginning and then one other one other way i am a big proponent of having a, a, the right meeting rhythm in your business and one of the things about that right meeting rhythm is a monthly board meeting if you like even if you're even if there's one of you or if there's in Duncan's case if there's three or four people within within his business you should be sitting down once a month and reviewing the numbers and, and the strategy and at, at that session one of the things that you can do is think about okay well let's have a look at one of the core values and let's just see if we can think about ways that we can really implement that into our business and you might well have a quarterly focus you might say for the next quarter let's really focus on embedding that core value in every single role everything that we do across the business but it's it's a it's a great question Duncan and it's vitally important that the businesses that really make core values and core purpose work within their within their business within their businesses really build it into everything they do and it isn't just an exercise that they've done once and then they've written it up nicely and maybe done a flip chart or a poster on the wall or a plaque or something like that. Um, and that's the end of it. It's, it's something that you want to embed in everybody's role as much as possible. Okay, great. Your next question is from Claire. And um, she says, um, is it really worth me spending time on this when I'm so busy running my business? Well, the short answer to that is yes. <laughs> Thank you, Claire. <laughs> Um, all right, I think if, if somebody had come to me at the start of my career and said, right, Kevin, I want you to just come away from what you're doing and, and spend a few hours on, uh, on core purpose, I think I'd have said, oh, I've got this deadline, I've got to get that out today and all that sort of type of stuff. Um, we all know that, you know, we've heard it many times about working on your business um, as, uh, rather than in your business. Uh, we all know we've got to make time to look at some of these strategic things. and and it can make a huge impact on your business and if uh, and i suppose the the flipping answer to that question claire is how serious are you about growing your business because if you if, if you're not that serious and it's just a nice sort of hobby business and that's what you want to do core purpose probably won't make much difference frankly um, but if you really are looking to scale up that business you need to have fundamental core purpose and core values that you can transmit through your organization, people can buy into and that they can use to then help that culture because it will be a way that actually you can start to then get yourself out of the day to day grind because they've got people have got a framework from which to make their own decisions. So instead of coming to you all the time and saying, what do we do in this case, Claire, you can say, well, OK, what do you think based on our core values? What do you think the right approach? Would, would be to it. So if you want to scale up a business and have other people being able to represent your business in the your employees, other st the staff, in a way that you would like your business to be represented, then 
core purpose, core ideology, core ideology, core values, core purpose, absolutely fundamental. So is it worth doing? Absolutely, yes, no question. Brilliant, thank you very much. Thank you again, Kevin, for hosting today's webinar. I will be sending out a copy of the presentation and also uh, Kevin's contact details out to you all shortly. So please do email him direct with any further questions that you may have. But before we close, just a quick reminder, if you would like to keep up to date on our latest webinars, please make sure you follow us on SlideShare and subscribe to us on our YouTube channel. You can also access all, our, all of our resources for business owners just by leaving us a comment. That's the end of today's Biz Smart Lunch and Learn webinar. Thank you all for listening and we hope you can join us again very soon.